Is that Larry Ridgeway? What's up, man? How's it going? It's going great, man. How's it going for you? That's uh, pretty good. I'm all right. I got the day off and shit. I'm taking a break from a logging Ranbot and gonna gonna hang out with you for a little while. Well, wait. You don't have to take a break on my account. Let's a log them together. Uh <laughs> 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 so, oh, oh, Larry showed his true colors, you know, shake the tree a little bit. He's over there with that fucking wife beating the rapist, fucking criminal on that criminal exile. I was listening to your shit the other day. You're listening to him say this shit. You're like, wait a minute. Whoa. Like, hold on. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, uh, that did happen. By the way, the audio's doubled up. Okay, I fixed that. So you got double Rambot there. See, I tried to fix the... I tried to fix the roadcaster, but... Uh, I don't know. Obviously, that's not working, so I'll fuck with that again. I fucking hate this motherfucking machine, Larry. God fucking no, God. Dude, I fucking... Oh, my God. I hate technology, too. I, I about took my phone today and smashed it into a million fucking pieces. Just, like, decides to close down apps, just crashing shit, shutting itself off. Okay. You just want the fucking thing to work. Okay, it should be fixed now. I don't fucking know. It sounds bad. Well, we tried to test it last night, Chief of Staff. Obviously, that test did not did not help things. How does it sound now, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, it's perfect now, Epstein says. Okay. My apologies. I thought I was doing something good, and it turned out bad. Yes, you're here with uh, Ethan Ralph. Rand has just lost his mind recently, uh, Larry. He extended... <laughs> maybe it's you. I don't know. He extended the hand of friendship, Larry. Uh, and you Multiple slapped it times. away. Yeah, it was the hand of friendship no. from down under. Why did you slap that away? Dude, there was no hand. Like, that's the thing. It's like, this is an illustration of just how untethered from fucking the docks of reality he is. That, that I don't have any idea what he's talking about. Like, the hand of friendship, I think that he's talking about is me. Like, I'd be in his chat and he'd be doing the whole, like... um you know, pro NJP thing, like kind of this is the only way, which is hilarious because like he's not even like he's not even in America. Like it NJP was wasn't an Australian thing. So he's just like sucking the dicks of these people pretty much. But like the hand of friendship, I'd go in there and have like mild criticism, just be like, oh, well, is that like actually the case? Ring? Could you like expound on that a little further? And these are like rhetorical things. Like, obviously, I know he wouldn't. And shit, but I wasn't trying to start a fight with him. I've gotten along with him. Like, we, this is like we've never had, I've known him for like fucking six years. He like freaks out about this shit. And it just like illustrates like how, like the point I've been making this entire time that if you have like the slightest bit of criticism about it, about anything, then you're just like persona non grata at this point in time. And Sven even went on and said, he's talking to Cowboy and he said, uh, Cowboy was saying, like, yeah, you know, it's fucking bullshit how like, people that I have, like Larry has known me, I've known for fucking years. Like when I stopped posting my show on TRS because I didn't want it, my show to be affiliated with NJP. And th that's like somehow warrants me not like these people that I thought were like friends of mine. Like I just never hear from them again. Like dude, my show that I was doing, I had, I have like rotating hosts, people that sh like are regulars and shit like that. But I was doing the program with two people and like the show died. Like we couldn't continue doing the show anymore because I was saying fucking like anti NJP shit in a private chat. Like the six people that came on my program. And I mean, the one was like, oh, I can't be in here whenever you're like saying fucking like negative shit about these guys. Like, get, like what kind of fucking shit is that? You know what I mean? The hand of friendship. It's like, it's it's not actual friendship. It's like you, the hand of friendship is like, oh, you know, I'll stop being a fucking cunt to you, mate, if you just say the say the fucking things that like I want to hear, even though like the evidence, the evidence is staring me right in the face and telling me otherwise. I'm too fucking drunk and stupid to figure it the fuck out. Like it just is it's insane. But wait, Larry, you smoke weed, so all that's invalid. I'm I'm about to smoke weed right now. I'm packing a bowl as we speak, bro. Like yeah, I do. You know what else I do, though? I like I don't get fucking pissed drunk on on streams like he's oh, you know, I do a fucking couple hours streams a day. It's like if you take the, the nightly like amount of street of time he spends on streams nightly each night that he does it and average it out. Bro, he streams for like fucking 10 hours a day. There were a couple times last week where he did like 21 hours. 
And like, I've drank a lot online, but I've chilled out on that, dude. There have been like two times where I've gotten on and had like four fucking beers. But I did. I used to get pissed drunk online, and it's embarrassing looking back on it now, like all the stupid shit. That know you know, feeling. you know what I mean? Yes, I know exactly it's, what you mean. <laughs> yeah. It's like a shameful thing. So then, like, you get like I'm I'm off the booze. Yeah, I smoke weed. Whatever, dude. Who fucking cares? Like, I also hold I've, I've I also hold down a job. I have a fucking house. I have a family and shit. But he's like saying all like, dude. There's just so much. Like, I'm I'm scatterbrained right now. There's so many things I want to fucking say, and I'm just like pissed off. I've been pissed for like two days about this because everything I've been saying is fucking true. But yeah, I smoke weed. Who cares? Well, but this I, fucking guy, like, it's better than, like, drinking yourself into oblivion for, like, 10 to 12 hours a day. You're still drunk when you get offline. So, like, what do you do the rest of the day? And you start your streams in the morning because you're catering to an American audience. So if it's nighttime here, it's daytime there. You get off the fucking computer. You're pissed drunk for the rest of the day. So, like, what are you doing? You don't think there's any quality family time with Rand uh, about uh, 25 drinks in? <laughs> well, I mean, these are like great like these are rhetorical questions and shit but like i don't under like i just don't get it like where did like there's 24 hours in a day you know you sleep for probably six to seven of those but i'll tell you this much like if you don't have like if it i, if, I don't I actually don't know how you could even do this without like feeling really shitty about yourself but i mean you could sleep in i guess but like what's sleeping into you if you're like basically nocturnal i don't know uh, and here's a super chat from Assmaster says Rand is a cuck nationalist. Stick to your own country. Scene retired. Yeah, he never. He doesn't really know that much about Australia, actually, Larry. And I, I he, he used to be on here, of course. And I, I remember I, I started trying to do a segment where I was like, all right, Rand, we'll talk to you about Australia. You know, give us some, give us some news there because we don't hear about it enough, and we have some Australian listeners too, right? Uh, and so, you know, give us a, a read of the political scene there, some of the news there, and he was. Like I know more about Australia than he does, and that's not even a that's not an exaggeration. As far as the political scene goes, <laughs> I do. And I'm like, this guy's totally lost. Like, what the fuck? I I don't even think he pays much attention to what's go going on down there in Australia. And I I just got to read this because I I started a stream of my own because I want this to be like I want this to be available for people that like don't want to go back and rewind and scroll through shit. That's fine. Got this guy from Rand's audience says he in quotes he's like you know I might be a rapist alcoholic wife beater but this Australian guy believed in a movement what a fag hey dickhead that's not the fucking thing I'm saying he didn't just believe in a movement he fucking backed up all the the evident lies. And you fucking lied on their behalf. This blacklisting organization that has started up a fucking friendship subscription based on already existing fucking social groups. Like you are scum of the fucking earth. You ran cover for this and you don't even live in the country, bro. You did it like you did it so that you could have an like you say the shit that these people say so that you can suck off the fucking teat of them and get people to donate to you. That's it. That's it. That's the only reason it is. And he's all fucking bummed out and shit now that it that like the NJP thing came to an end because there goes like fucking three quarters of a show content. Well, he was all over that, uh, as far as promoting NJP. Uh, and so I don't know. I guess you did hear oh, dude, I, this fan appearance. So, here, well, I'm just the, waiting on the next thing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Rand. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, and this guy said his job is online, Larry. The 10 hours he is online is his job. His job is to get fucking shit-faced, like, drunk tank wasted online all day. Like, you can't just clock out from being drunk. Retard. Like, what the fuck? It, like, what world are we living in? Do you know what I mean? What world is this? Like, oh, he's like, Ralph's online, like, 10 hours a day. Yeah, Ralph's also losing weight and not blacking out online. Don't try to damn the man today because of the shit he did, like, a couple months ago or something like that. Like, yeah, Ralph used to, like, fucking take pills and get drunk on stream. Like, he's not doing that now. Well, so what the fuck are you talking about? Well, Just, he's... That fucking he, drives me crazy. And that, that they do the same shit to me. I voice a fucking opinion, and these cocksuckers come out of the woodwork to be like, oh, it's ironic for you. Uh, it's, it's fucked up for you and him to be like, uh, it's, you and Ralph aren't really the people to be criticizing other heavy drinkers. Uh, he ruined his life with drugs and alcohol. It's like, hey, man. Uh, you reach rock bottom, and all you can do is go back up from there. And you guys talk about this crab in a bucket mentality. That's fucking straight up what you're doing right now. Straight up what you're doing right now. Ralph's out here trying to like actually better him fucking self, and you're like, oh well, don't forget, don't forget what you did, man. Don't forget that like a year ago or like a couple months ago, you were like some really fucking stupid shit. Like, 
it's just stupid, man. It's like it's the dumbest fucking way to live your life. Well, and he's needless to say, very hung up on me. Uh, it brought me up unprompted two or three times uh, during that stream. And, and one of the things he said was, "You ran to me. You ran to me." That's not what happened, by the way. Uh, I, I said <laughs> no, no. at all. If anything, I ran to you. I, I saw what you posted on Telegram. Of course, we've been cool the whole time, uh, but we don't talk all the time or anything like that. Like these are your own. Uh, you know, opinions that you've come to, right? I didn't, I wasn't in your ear. I, we haven't talked that much uh, over the past Dude, year. I've been here saying this stuff for fucking like yeah. a year and a half, two years. I've been saying this shit. Yeah. Uh, and I messaged you uh, and commented on your Telegram first, and then I messaged you because uh, Rand, you know, made it a thing, right? And so I'm like, hey, what's going on here? But you certainly didn't run to me. <laughs> that's not what, that's well, not what occurred at all. Oh, Larry's on the kill stream right now. It's like, no, I wasn't. I didn't go on at all that night. What are you talking? Like, Dingo's on the kill stream. Two different, different people. And which, by the way, Dingo did come on stream with me like that night or the next night. And he agrees with me. Dingo fucking agrees with me. So like, and, and his retard audience had some stupid shit. They were like, oh, my fucking, he's like, uh, some moron in his audience was talking about some thing. Because I was talking about how like, oh, when NJP was, protesting for fucking in Waukesha about how like he should get the death penalty like there is no death penalty in Wisconsin it's been gone since like 1853 and they're like oh well why didn't they try to take it to be like a federal hate crimes because they can pursue the death penalty on that well the reason is like oh is because on that road do I like do I agree with this no dude like in principle like yeah it like I get what they're saying and shit like that but none of these people have an understanding of like the law neither do I I'm not a fucking lawyer but like I care enough to like look into why it is they 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 couldn't have done that. There's a lot of things they have to prove in order to like get hate crime shit. You know, you know what I mean? You have to prove yes. that that was actually the motivation. I'm not saying that it wasn't, but the federal government who has like a 90 plus percent conviction rate, they only take cases and like press charges and shit they have like a slam dunk on. That's how they keep their fucking conviction rate high. Like well Plus, the yeah, Justice Department would have to file that. So it would have to be the Biden administration, basically, uh, filing that. And, I mean, you know as well as I do, there's not much chance. Uh, there's not much chance of that happening. Um, you know, I think the protests and, and raising awareness, um, you know, about that is good. Um, but a lot of the rhetoric and, and things that were said are just kind of nutty, Larry. Um yeah. And so, okay, so let's go Let's go through it, and we'll talk about Rand some more, too. I'm sure he's listening now. If he's not too drunk, who knows, or passed out. Oh, whatever. my God, dude. Um, go ahead. Oh, this fucking, this, this clown guy is like, they never wanted the death penalty, but they protested to get a hate crime. Okay, but if you get the hate crime enhancement on what he did, what does that, like, almost necessitate at the federal level? The death penalty. Shut the fuck up, you retard. Continue. I'm sorry, Ralph. No, it's fine. That's fine. Uh, and also, somebody in chat said, no TDS today. Mike and Sven fall out. I don't know. I don't know uh, if there is any fallout there or not. We talked to Johnny Monoxide on Saturday. Uh, a lot of people uh, watched. We had over 2,200 unique viewers I saw in the panel. So a lot of people watched live. A lot of people came and watched the replay. Now, you see Mike Enoch on your screen uh, Larry, I'm going to first off. What you, before I do that, uh, I'm going to read his um, uh, release. I guess this morning here in a second. But uh, what what's your relationship with with Mike Enoch, and and how did that how's that gone over the years? I mean, they're never like I was never really close to those dudes. You know what I mean? I had a show on their network, but uh, like the most that Mike and I I think have ever we've exchanged like hellos and stuff like that. And but like, we've never had like conversations. I, I would say that the relationship was that I just had a program on their site and had gone to like meetups and shit. But that was really, I've talked to Sven like a little bit more, but I wouldn't say that we were ever like very close either. I pretty much just talked to my co-hosts and shit. I talked to Borzoi, Spectre and those guys as well. Like they were, like those, they were some of the only people that like have kept in touch with me throughout this entire thing. So, like even the first time in 2019 when I had like a meltdown about some of this shit and disappeared, like took my people think that I got kicked off in 2019. No, I deleted all my shit off the site then as well. In during the stream, I did it on air actually, but 
there's not there was there's not really much for me to talk about. And I wasn't okay. Well, do you think like, that's John a good way to be? A more... He seems kind of isolated. Um, again, I you know I don't know. It's just my read on it. Like you would think, not that he has to talk to you every day or you know be your best bud or whatever, but he is the showrunner over there, the chairman, <laughs> if you will. Um, you would think he would have a little bit more interaction. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, per yeah, I understand that too. I, I did like my show was kind of different especially on like the second run over there i i wanted to focus more on just like making people laugh and not be so miserable all the time with like oh man everything has to be political but like everything's not political you know what i mean right it's and just it's not. Was so like I can't, on Saturday I, too. yeah go ahead and it's like i like i don't know what i'm gonna like what i just don't like there was a point in time where i was like yo is like what the fuck like, i i don't like i could like there's nothing to, like to talk with to these people and like yeah it like kind of bums you out that like everyone else that like uh, you interact with but then like you can't interact like it's just weird interacting with some but then like you think about it for a while it's just like yeah it's because it's just like what like what conversation is there to have i've just never really like whatever now, so me... i mean johnny would know more about those guys and how right. he has like much more of a relationship than i now, let me read what uh, the reason I asked you that is because he put out a big thing this morning. I guess you may have seen it. I got it linked, but I actually have not read it. Cause I, I have gonna... not. Oh, OK. Well, <clears throat> then uh, you're in for a treat here. OK, so this is uh, Mike Pinovich, also known as Mike Enoch, uh, on his Telegram account at, let's see, 9.06 a.m. this morning. And he said this. Tony, Tony Hovater's firing is about his abysmal job performance, not personal drama. After several red flags from staff and supporters and a debacle in which Tony removed yet another entire regional supporter group over a personal slight, I decided to stop taking his word and conducted an internal investigation. It exposed... Oh, they investigated. Okay. It exposed not only his vindictive methods, but his sheer negligence. He had not attended staff meetings in three months. Morale was plummeting. Resignations were coming in hot and heavy, and there was an overall toxic atmosphere pervading everything. His arbitrary rules and my way or the highway approach to our staff and SG leaders cost us entire regions and created unnecessary enemies. Tony's job metrics were dismal. You can't pretend it's not about you when everyone reporting to you that actually does any work is quitting. And then, in the midst of various crises that he had created, he famously went on vacation to Germany, making everyone question whether he even gave a fuck. Appearing in public looking like the homeless guy on the corner begging for money to feed his emaciated dog did nothing to inspire confidence either. Last fall, during our leadership summit, this guy just up and walked out in the middle of a planning session to take a nap, causing everyone in the room to crook an eyebrow and make awkward eye contact with each other. Yeah, people complained and talked shit about him and his behavior, not just in one chat group, but across the entire country. People that never spoke to each other in their lives told me the same story about him. Tony is not doing anything. He only shows up to ban or abuse people. Why wouldn't people talk shit in side chats when this is going on? The damage he did to the supporter group network is undeniable. Leaders, organizing since before NJP w was a thing, aren't interchangeable chess pieces for his machine. Several more SGs were banned or quit within a week while I was conducting my investigation. Tony's approach of just banning detractors and ignoring staff would have left us with nothing but haters and no functional organization. Eventually, he just saw the NJP as a vehicle for creating and then carrying out various personal agendas. A behavior pattern he continues. Sad. Now we are left with this shit sandwich to sweep up. No one can deny it's an absolute dog's breakfast, and it would look retarded to try to print, pretend otherwise. That's true. In the end, I have to take ultimate responsibility for trusting Tony as long as I did and apologize to everyone for that. Despite the chaos, I have the support of the SG leaders and the staff, and we are coming up with what to do next after the NJP. So that sounds like the NJP is dead officially, but the people are all still with me. All Tony can yeah. do is create... <laughs> Yeah, it's not usually good when you have to say that, but dude, I'll, I've had I've had ahead. fucking seventy five new members in my chat in the last twenty four hours. That like of like ex support group leaders, people that like were like gung ho NJP, like shitting all over this stuff, like fucking posting 
um, messages and shit that they had on tell it's like no i don't think so mike this just is it like again he's just like completely detached from the people he claims to represent well and that's kind of what i was you know hinting at uh, when i ask you that question where he seems uh, either he's lying and there is some you know there's text that's been leaked where he, he admits they lie about the attendance and stuff like that so either which i mean you know that happens but uh either he's <laughs> lying or he's just so detached that he doesn't know what the fuck's going on which you know either one's an option but uh okay i'll, I'll finish up here and then i have a super chat from ass master uh, all tony can do is create suspicion and toxicity by posting vague threats and revealing things said to him in confidence on the telegram page he hijacked this just further shows his lack of character and the fact he prioritizes online mischief over everything. Who would do that? He can cause temporary headaches for other people, but no one will ever trust him again. Who knows when... But they'll so trust Mike. Like, right, yeah. I mean, dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Go I got to shut up. I'm no, 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 we'll go fine. over it after you're done. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost, it's almost done, by the way. Uh, Tony said something, too, and we'll go over that after, but we'll comment on this first. Um, who knows when something you may have said to him will end up in public because he is feeling particularly jerky one morning. But everyone has talked some shit on everyone at some point, so eventually everyone will just forgive each other and move on because it's better than remaining mired in the shit. Or they won't, and we will just deal with it. Yeah, he can hurt others, but he can't do anything productive or positive, and eventually he will find that his life is a chemical spill, and he did it to himself. That's the statement uh, from NJP chairman, former NJP chairman. I don't know. Uh, Mike Enoch, Mike Pinovich. Thoughts, Larry, which way? Oh, before I do, uh, Assmaster with the Super Chat says, when I did my pool party vetting a few years back, they asked me my favorite TRS show, and I, of course, said Hate House, is what Assmaster said. Hell yeah. Now, thoughts on that uh, statement from the chairman? Well, I mean, I'd have to go back and just do like – like paragraph by paragraph, like right off the, I'm looking at the statement right now. Yeah, that's fine. And just like the first fucking th Tony's firing is about his abysmal job performance, not personal drama. I mean, you can go back and listen to the NJP report with uh, Warren and those guys and listen to like these dudes talk about that. Um, anybody else would have thought that Tony was doing great until they just said that he wasn't. And like that, that's rich. And you're the one that like, he answers to you. You know what I mean? Like, so this just shows like piss poor leadership. After several red flags from staff and supporters in this debacle, uh, Tony removed another subject. I decided to stop taking his words. So like after like several times of this dude just like fucking up your shit and just like wrecking everything that you have, that you've built, you know what I mean? Like it took multiple times for you. Oh, I finally stopped taking his, uh, taking his word on it. Well, like, and particularly, uh, look, I've said this a few times already, but they bounce Stryker, and, you know, I don't really care for Stryker, although I have some respect for some of his articles uh, and stuff like that. Um, but personally, I don't really <laughs> jive with him. Uh, but they bounced him. That was a huge deal. And, you know, a lot of their people were kind of in revolt about that, and it was apparently Tony who had helped engineer that. And then 10 days later, they get rid of Tony uh, as well. So that investigation maybe should have been sped up. I don't know. It doesn't really, it doesn't really make sense that there's no personal drama reasons for this, Larry. Well, no, it's just them trying to fucking, like, yeah, the striker should happen. Striker was, like, the, I mean, just two weeks before he was out, he was a fucking genius and, like, the most serious, like, geopolitical mind in the world. Like, what a joke. And then he's gone, and then he's like, oh, well, all this stuff comes out about Stryker and all this shit like that. And then they try to, like, get the people who were pissed off about the Stryker shit back by getting rid of Tony and then blaming it on Tony's abysmal job performance. It's... it's but but at the same time, they take responsibility for everything while excusing themselves of all the things that they claim they take responsibility for. And looking at his fucking, this second paragraph here, it starts off with his arbitrary rules and the my way or the highway approach to our staff and SG leaders. Well, like right off the bat, the second word in this paragraph is arbitrary. Like your entire position at the head of this thing is arbitrary. What fucking, what qualifies you to lead anything for real? Just because, like, I mean, I think it's come out as much. I mean, Sven said it. Sven, his co-host, said it. Like, these people aren't qualified for this shit. They shouldn't be leading anything. And he actually said, Larry was right. These people are just fucking podcast, ho podcast hosts. 
They should have listened to Larry, the man who drinks beer on stream, smokes weed, plays shitty music, and does comedy bits, accomplished just as much as the NJP did, not even fucking trying in, like, moving the conversation forward in national politics and, like, getting close to power and shit like that. Well, the political party thing's always a LARP, really. Um, it's very hard to set up a political party. Uh, and the things they said in that letter that we had discussed, actually, in private, um, you know, about becoming, um, you know, on par with the Green Party or the Libertarian Party, which are kind of seen as jokes, uh, to be honest, uh, in the national body politic. But they have ballot access in, in all 50 states, I think, or damn near 48, something like that. Um, so, you know, that's a pretty lofty goal, Larry, <laughs> Get, getting ballot yeah. access in all 50 states. Like, if they were able to accomplish something like that, that would be astonishing, and it would be something to celebrate. Um, but they didn't accomplish that, uh, of course. And there's nothing wrong with being a podcast host uh, at all. And, no! Right? Like, <laughs> you know, that's not... Not at all, dude! Right. It's that's not a bad thing. And I see some of Rand's lackeys or, or whatever in your chat... First off, nobody would know who Randbot is if he didn't come on this drama faggot show right here, the kill stream. Nobody would know who Rand is. He would still be driving the garbage truck down onto. Nobody would give a fuck about him if it wasn't for me. He said it himself. So that talking point, there's a lot of nerve there uh, to throw that one out there because Rand damn sure saddled up to the kill stream every time I asked for free. And he did it for free, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, because he knew he was nothing without me, the Ralph Amell. And you can yeah. take that to the bank. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say, because you said he did it for free. Ralph is paying me $500 for this appearance today. He told that's me. True. That's true. That's true. No. Check is in the mail. Check is in the mail. It's coming like... from Mexico, so it might, you know, it might get lost. I don't know. but uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Go I'm back. counting on it, man. <laughs> go back to the go back to the Enoch statement uh, and, and go through some more uh, some things you might want to say on that. And I'll read Tony Hobater's here in a few minutes, too. <laughs> All right. So then it says, like, you can't pretend it's not about you when everyone reporting to you actually does the work is quitting. It's like, but all of these people, like, you're at the top. Like, these people, like, they report to you and they're quitting. It's like, but dog, they, in all reality, like, report to you and they're quitting. Like, Tony is your underling. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're, like, the top guy at a job, he has his underlings and then they're, like, the level, like, the, you know, floor level employees and shit like that that top guy is responsible for the things that his supervisors do do you know what i mean right the so buck stops with him like the buck stops with you dude so you're just like a dog shit fucking leader and this uh you can't uh, you can't pretend it's not about you no it's about you and then in the midst of various crises that he had created that you allowed him to create he famously went on a vacation to Germany, making everyone question whether he even gave a fuck. Well, all these things that happened, Mike, under your watch, we could question whether or not you actually give a fuck. Like, for allowing it to happen. The buck stops with you. Appearing in public like a homeless guy on the corner begging for money to feed his dog. Well, again, Mike, this is your underling. You let him give speeches at your events looking like that. You let him, like, he went over and did this, this stuff with Mark Collette's group PA, and he gave his speeches looking like that, and you didn't say anything to him because you're afraid, like, you're, what, you're, like, afraid of confrontation or something? Um, last fall, during our leadership, so this guy was just up and walked out in the middle of a planning session to take a nap. Why didn't you fire him then? He left the fucking planning session to take a nap. Like, what is, like, what even is that, dude? Well, this it's is like all any retconning. fucking employee. Yeah, it's retconning. It's the, exactly. Yeah. And it sounds like something Trump would say, too. Right. <laughs> Honestly, uh, where, you know, uh, I still get a kick out of Trump and I probably support him over some of these other faggots. But like it, it's like he hired all these people. Right. And then after they quit or after he fires them, he's like, oh, he was always a piece of shit and he was dumb as fuck. And he did this, this and that. And so like, well, you hired him, Trump. Uh, so it's very similar to that, in my opinion. He even uses a Trumpism, the sad uh, comment there during the middle of it. But go ahead. Yeah. And then going on to the next paragraph. Yeah, people complained and talked shit about him and his behavior, not just in one group chat, but across the entire country. People that never spoke about 
spoke to each other their entire lives told me the same story about him. Hmm, Mike, that sounds like a certain group that you talk about in your show all the time that you've used literally the exact like the same fucking example. People from different countries at different times all over the world are telling the same stories about these people. Maybe it's fucking true. So like the stuff that you've been saying for the last seven, eight fucking years, you don't even like you must not even understand it. Like you can't make the connection there that like you're allowing the same fuck like it like do you know you understand what I'm saying, Ralph? Like it's fucking yes. crazy. No, they, all these people told me this stuff, but I just I couldn't believe it. I'm just totally blind. I have no responsibility, guys. It says here, um, Tony is not doing anything. He only shows up to ban or abuse people. Why? Like, I mean, if the people are telling you all this stuff and like you have access, Mike, as the chairman, to how many people are coming and going into your fucking little thing here, why wouldn't you get rid of them? Why wouldn't you get rid of them? You know what I mean? I I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Uh, These are all rhetorical questions. I'm just kind of no, no, no. But it's like, well, you knew all this for a long time, and maybe it is afraid of confrontation. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but obviously, you know, according to what he said, if you believe what he said, he should have got rid of him a long time ago. Now, I'm going to read uh, Tony's thing here in a minute, but he's more thought. I just have to read this. This is funny. This dude says, "As an old guy, I would have joined NJP if I knew there were nap times involved." <laughs> 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 that could have been a selling point. <laughs> hey, man, dude. A little siesta, yeah. I'm as going, they call it down here. Yeah. To... <laughs> yeah, standard nap parties. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. Nap time does sound pretty excellent, I have to say. I'm getting a little uh, older, too. Uh, it doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world. Um, now, um, he, he seems to say that... Um, the obvious, Larry, that uh, NJP is is defunct. What to do next after the NJP? Um, well, I would just go back to doing my podcast if I was him. But um, I don't know. What do you think? The thing about that is the thing about that is though is that I feel like you have to like he's gonna feel like he has to keep doing something that is in like the same vein, like a different restructure because like doesn't want to like. I feel like if he just quit and like retreated back to podcast, people would be like, would be really fucking pissed. You know what I mean? Some people are still as um, the arch philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer said, um, there are some people still living on a prayer, Ralph. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe he, he didn't say that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's an 80s song. Living on a prayer. I know that. Too. Oh, but yeah. like, I mean, I don't know who's going to put any stock in any kind of, I don't know, just stop with the political LARPing. Uh, I mean, Fuentes has, has done the same thing, and in my opinion, that hurt him too, where it's like you're not going to be president. You're not even going to be a member of the House. Like, just stop it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Every time this happens, bad things come out of it, Larry. Um, Sargon well, running for office too. That's another example. Like this shit. You're on the internet. You're a shit poster. You're a shit talker. Just stick with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It provided you a good life. Provided me a good life. You, you don't have to do more than that, Larry. Well, the thing is, this is that like when they're when they're doing that sort of political content that they're doing, and it like progressively gets people to like move further in one direction. Eventually. Um, like and and here's the thing: these people are so fucking stupid they don't even like know the parallels to this. That like Hitler, like the guy that they love so much, like they Me they must not have like read anything about. Like a lot of, like the things in the lead up to World War II, like that like he did, he felt like he had to do because he was being pushed by extreme wings of of like his own party. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I know. So, but. Fuck, what was uh there was a thing I wanted to say here. Oh yeah, the way that they'll be able to keep this thing going is by just doing the um like there we live in America. These guys know that they talk shit about it all the time. And there are a lot of dumb people in America. So it is kind of gonna be like it has been for the last few years, where it's just a revolving door of retardation. Like all the smart people will leave and all the dumb people will come in. And when the dumb people like figure out that they're just wasting their time, they'll leave to be replaced by another dumbass that comes into the revolving door of, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how it keeps going. Cause there are people that are involved now that don't even know about the shit that happened in 2017 with the wife stuff. The wife stuff. Yeah. Um, that was not good. Uh <laughs> <laughs> 
That was not good. Um, and matter a rough of fact, situation. You would think that would sink most people. I got to give them a little credit for for climbing back from that, but uh, you know, no, in that instance, like they were kind of like the Ralph, the Ethan Ralph of white nationalism. <laughs> you know, what I mean, you thought like how many times did you it's think true. that they were going to be sunk, but they just came back? They're like the cockroaches of white nationalism. <laughs> I take that as a major compliment. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's like, well, this guy should have probably been sunk off that. But he he climbed back and, you know, was on my show some after and talked about it and went other places and, uh, you know, did get past that. But uh, I don't know if he'll get past this or not. Uh, now, any other thoughts on that before I read uh, Tony Hovater's very long uh, statement here, Larry? Well, the thing I was just, uh, I won't tear here the next thing. Despite the chaos, I have the support of the SG leaders and the staff we are coming up with to what to do next after the NJP. That's funny because the support group leader of a certain, of like one of one state is in my chat like right now, like shitting all over the NJP on Telegram. So like, no, they don't. Like, oh, I have the support of the SG leaders. No, you don't, dude. They think you're a fucking joke. And uh, the people are still with me. That is absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. Well, anytime you say that, uh, it's because you're worried about the people not being with you, Larry. I mean, you don't have to say what the it, people are with you if they're with you because everybody just knows that. Right? It's, a, it's another one of these mantras, dude. It's another one of these fucking mantras that, that these people will just say over and over to, to just try to... Um, <laughs> hold on. There goes Larry bringing up the past to apply to now when five minutes ago he called Ralph a changed man that can't be judged by the past. Like, what did I, like, what do you mean? Like, Ralph's making an active effort to try to improve his life, and, like, the results are here to show themselves. These people have made, like, constant fuck-ups, and, like, we're seeing the fruits of that today. Like, there was, there is no, like, upward trajectory. Sven said it himself the other night. Ever since NJP started, TRS subscriptions have been going down, and they only got to 600 fucking people. You're just dumb, dude. You're just fucking stupid. But, what was it that I was saying before I got um, sidetracked there? I was I was going to make a, a good SG point. Groups. You were talking about the SG groups and, and the, the people. The people being with, being with you and um, fuck. I think I'm going to probably forget it. The, pe the people being with him and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I forget. It's they not, were in your chat, you said. And um, I don't know. Maybe somebody in chat could jog our memory as well. But um, you got sidetracked there. It happens to me too on occasion. Um any other thoughts? Maybe that'll come back to you here in a second. I'm looking in chat. If you have any questions, powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retort, Rumble Rants uh, as well. I did get uh, a super chat. Oh, dude. oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so he says that like I brought up the Mike's wife thing. Dude, I didn't bring it up as a point. The point, I, like, these people are just, like, willfully fucking dishonest. Like, there's no way that you could misconstrue what I said to, to bring it up as a point to, for, like, some sort of own. The point I was making was that the revolving door of retards bro continues to spin it continues to spin so much that there are people who are here now who don't know about that shit in 2017 hitler respecter it wasn't an own on mike it was to illustrate how it will continue to work you dumb fuck so like i should have shut down this chat window over here. i'm like this, this guy is just a fucking retard yeah, he was angry about you coming on here. I don't know if he's a Rand guy or just... Cry me a river, stupid. dude. Go go listen to Randbot have fucking 19 beers tonight and say the same thing that he's been saying, like, verbatim for the last, like, four years. Yeah, and then Dingo. So Dingo was on here the other night, and he kind of went off uh, on this stuff, uh, and he was mad, basically, that they were coming out and saying all this all these things that were the polar opposite of what they've been saying for years, and he said he felt like a dumbass because he had been out there defending them based on what they had been saying, right? And now it's like, oh, that's bullshit, and this guy's a piece of shit, and fuck him, and da 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 And Dingo was not pleased. <laughs> uh, he was not pleased uh, by that. Uh, thank you, Meme Man, for another super chat Meme there. Man sent $3.50. Meme Man, let's go! $3.50, I appreciate that. Um, but, you know, if if you've lost Dingo, and that's not disrespect to Dingo, he's a loyal guy, um, that's a bad sign. Uh, he's a loyal guy, but he's not stupid, <coughs> right? right? Like, uh, and no. Rand is kind of dependent. You know, Dingo's got his own job, his own, you know, real life stuff. Rand is kind of dependent on sucking them off to make money, <coughs> honestly. And he's kind of like a 
died in the war. I, you know, I hate to use the term cult, but um, no, it's a cult. It, it has is that a cult. flavor. Yeah, it has that flavor. It has. It's not just that flavor, Ralph. Like, let me be clear. This is a cult. Like, if you look up the definitions and shit, like they might not be a suicide yourself cult, but like they don't have to be. Not all cults have to like go down that road. Do you know what I'm saying? The the inner dynamics of this group, the blacklisting and shit like that. Like this, like this is cult shit. The way they refer to people who aren't in their circles and stuff like that, like they have names for people who aren't in their circles and shit. Like this is a cult. It's a cult. They feel like they're enlightened, um, that they know something that the general public doesn't. It, it's a cult. Like, yeah, I mean, it's hard to disagree. Uh, and they do the same type of, you know, we have a knock out the other <coughs> night, and you know, he said. He was, you know, Sven was like his best friend uh, in life and their family spent time together and all this. And then it's just total defu, uh, which is a term um, used with cults, right? Uh, disassociation. Scientologists do this, too. Where it's like, OK, this guy left Scientology. You can't talk to him anymore. Uh, and you see people in, in your chat, uh, a couple of them at least, mad at me. And it's like, why? Yeah, the really? guy's like, why are you on Ralph's show? It's like, <laughs> yeah. what are Ralph like? <laughs> right. What like, what I the do? fuck? It's, what I talk shit about? It's like, what am, like, what am, yeah, go ahead. It's like, what am I saying? You know what I mean? Like, what am I? Like, what am I? Like, what am I saying? And then they're like, oh, Larry's backstabbing. No, I am talking about things that are happening in the real world, dude. Like, this is happening. Like, I don't have blind fucking loyalty. I'll call something out as like fucked up if I see it. And Rand's like reaction the other night to like, to what? Oh, I was, I shit in the, like, I kicked away the olive branches. I shit in the hand of friendship. No, dude, that's not true. That's just fucking, like, patently false. And, like, anybody with eyes that's honest and, like, just go back and listen to, like, I did fucking, like, eight hours of stream so far. And I have, like, an hour and a half at least left to go through. So I, it's going to be, like, 11 hours. Just go listen to it. Like, being, if you're an honest actor, I think it's evident that, like, I'm fucking, like, I'm literally listening. Second, I've listened to the entire stream. And I'm addressing it point by point as it goes along. Like, I don't get how is that dishonest? I'm not taking his words out of fucking context. I'm not backstabbing anybody. Fuck him. Like, they're, like to backstab someone means that there has to be some sort of relationship there. There was like there was no genuine relationship there. He didn't give a fuck about like any like me in any regard. Like, so what do I owe him? Like the, the entire thing was like transactional. I mean, that's what I guess friendships are transactional. If I'm being honest, like you're not you're going to yeah, reciprocate. Of well, course, you're going to be you're, you're going to reciprocate. But it's like, dude, I didn't do anything to you. And like immediately you jump into the, like, like, fuck you. Well, Rand's and I'm like not going to take Larry. it to the level. I'm not I mean, I'm not taking it to the level that some have where like they talk about his family and shit. No, I like my issue that? is specifically with with fucking Randbot. Who would do that? What dastardly son of a bitch would do that? Although, to be fair, he's <laughs> talked about mine, right? Uh, and kind of took it to that personal level. But Rand is a guy who I thought was a good friend of mine, uh, actually, and talked to him about a lot of different things, uh, just life stuff uh, as well. And, you know, I said this the other day. You know, I was brought up where if you disagree politically, you, you shouldn't lose a friendship over that, Larry. If you disagree about business or something like that, that's a separate category from, um, oh, now I can't be this guy's friend. And I saw how quickly he turned on you. And, you know, it's it's like, well, why? Right? Like, you've been cool with him for years. Okay, he disagrees on NJP or TRS or whatever, but you don't have to throw him out the door for that reason. And uh, it's... And I don't like and, Rand, but I still like, didn't like seeing that because it's like, man, just an instinct of mine. I don't like seeing that, Larry. No, and it's like, oh my god, I, I don't know, man. There's just, there's, there's so, there's so, like, the, oh, backstabbing. I just think like, I can't fucking, just infuriates me, dude. And it's like, this is backstabbing. It's like you have no idea, like the shit that I've dealt with for the last like three or four, like my foot, like for the last, like there are people that I used to like speak to i mean yeah they don't do shows and stuff you know what i mean but these are just like regular people that like i used to talk to that like i just stopped hearing from like where'd they go do you know what i mean where'd they go what changed and here's the thing is like me and Rand don't even have like a political disagreement you know what i mean like it's not like like that's not the point rand like it's not even like we disagree politically i mean he's an australian like we can't agree politically because we were in two different systems but like the sentiments and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, 
don't, I think that NJP was fucking stupid. And I've thought that for a while. I went to like, I think I went to two meetings and the, the speeches were basically monologues that you'd hear on a podcast on TRS. It was it. Like, I just stopped posting. I didn't want to be affiliated with the shit, so I just stopped posting. I didn't like, you'd think that I fucking stole money from these people or something. You know what I mean? It's fucking crazy. Well, plus, you know, Rand said all this stuff in public. How's that not back? You know what I mean? Like, you're responding uh, to what to his provocations, basically. And the kill stream is a place to do that. Uh, and so I don't. And it's like see it as a backstab. And you're right, Ralph. I, I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, I'm, I'm fine. fired up. But you're oh. right. What you just said is correct. He said this shit in public. Let me let me read you the message that I sent in his fucking chat that he banned me for because really? I'm. Oh, he's in here just shitting up my chat, mate. Fucking black pill and rabbit, 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 rabbit. Like fucking just insanity. And do you guys tell me if this is like, um, oh, he's just in here shitting up the chat, mate, being a fucking naysaying cunt. He was talking about, and I, I this, I, you know, talk, I think I talked about this on the stream. He said some shit like, oh, these people out here saying the NJP is a big failure or some bullshit because they didn't fucking run candidates for president. And I just said in the fucking chat, straw man, town councils and shit is what they mean. You're a dishonest guy, Rand. That's it, dude. That was what I said. And that fucking turned that that's turned into all of this. Like, holy fuck. And then it was it is a response. I then took the stream that he did that he kicked me out of. And I'm responding like, actually, it's the day after. It's the day after. I didn't even do it that night. It was the Sven stream. I'm responding to shit that he said to his audience. And his audience in the fucking chat talking about like what an alcoholic, like weed smoking loser I oh, we we never liked Larry. Do you know what I mean? The fucking the, the 1984, like, oh, we've always been at war with. You know, like <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it's kind of like with Tony Hovader. And again, I you know, I don't have any relationship with Hovader, so I don't, you know, maybe he is a dick, right? Like, I don't know. But it's a guy that was in a key position. It's like, oh, we never liked Tony. He looked like a fucking homeless guy, and he was begging for his dog. It's like, okay, well, and I know how it goes. That homeless guy was your chief, he was your chief of staff. Right. That homeless guy was your chief of fucking staff. Yeah, right. You're the one that elevated him. And again, I know how it goes. This is standard operating procedure uh, as far as internet drama. But that's what it is, right, Larry? So, um, you know, I can't say that I've never done anything like that. Well, you know, once somebody turns on you or you turn on them or whatever, well, you got a whole list of things <laughs> to go down. And but that, it's retconning. It's still, even when I've done it, it's like, well, that's kind of trying to rewrite history, really. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, and then these guys come out with the, and then they'll say shit like, oh, everybody just wanted to fucking stir up drama, mate. Just fucking trying to stir up drama, all these fucking naysaying shitbags, mate. And it's like, they're not stirring up drama. Dude, they're reacting to fucked up shit that's happening in front of them. Like, you can define that as drama, but that's like being very fast and loose with what that word means. You know what I'm saying? They're not intentionally shit stirring. Like, you're, like, these people are fucking up and people are pissed off because of the effect that it had on their lives. And then some people are pissed off about the, like, the, like, They've put time into this. Countless volunteer efforts and shit like that. You know, like hours. Volunteer hours. Like time spent away from your family, like the, their families and shit, like putting stickers up with fucking QR codes. Oh, scan the QR code to learn something with some slogan, dude, that you can repeat till you're blue in the face. But at the end of the day, these are just mantras that you're saying to make yourself fucking feel better and like something's getting done. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Well, if anybody's stirring up drama, it's Mike Eno. <laughs> And Tony Hovater and all these guys, right? You're reacting to it. Uh, like you said, it's Finn himself. I mean, that was a pretty dramatic appearance uh, the other night, right? Like, so when these things happen, I'm going to be talking about it. Everybody else is going to be talking about it. You had a vested interest, right? You were on their site and I know a lot of these people. Um, you know, people trying to drag you in like Randbot and, you know, he's a drama content. He's talking to Ralph and all this shit. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you didn't start this. You're reacting to it, uh, and you'd actually distance yourself already. So anyway, um, all right. Yeah. Me, any other thoughts? You know, Ralph, this? that's the thing, ahead. dude. Go ahead. Is that, you know, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. All right. Now, the Tony, Tony, Tony Hovader has a long statement, um, but any other thoughts on Mike Enoch first and what he said today? No. Okay. I didn't think so. I thought we covered it pretty well. But this is pretty long. Dude, I'm like really mad at Randbot. 
like Rand bot right now specifically because of his like fucking bullshit. But yeah, no. Well, no, Everything we'll I talk about Rand some more. I just want to get this all in here. Cha cha, whoa. Cha cha sent hundred dollars. Rand is the best opposition <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> cha cha back at it again with a hundred dollar bill. Thank you for that around the holiday season. Uh, appreciate your support, Cha Cha. Rand is the best opposition intelligence there. Uh, I don't know if intelligence and Rand bot go in the same sentence uh, in any way whatsoever, but uh, maybe maybe oppo intelligence. Yeah, I want to see Rand's uh, oppo files, his black book. Uh, I'm sure it's got the names of the local liquor stores there in Kookaburra, wherever the fuck he lives, uh, out in the sticks there down under. I don't know. I almost feel bad for Rand, Larry. Nobody believe that, but dude, uh, you're not gonna believe this. Like, you on. won't believe this. I'm like, just the other day, I swear to fucking god, like four or five days ago, dude. We talk about Rand on our program. We make jokes and shit. Like, I didn't have a fucking problem with Rand. Do you know what I mean? All of this shit comes out. He's still doing the cheerleading bit and like the way he like reacts and shit. And it's like, yeah, the stuff that came out, I'm fucking pissed off about this because it has, like, fucked with my social life and shit like that. But, I mean, not so much anymore, but there was a point, you know what I mean, like, whenever this all initially happened. But, um, what were you going to say? Nothing. I was letting you talk. I wasn't going to. No. I was going to interrupt that. Larry is fired up and ready to go uh, here today on the show stream. He just, just let him go. I'm just trying to stand out of the way, Larry. Like I, you know. I to... <laughs> <laughs> and dude, I, I, I fucking hate. I like. I just want to do like my program, but like I was saying, you won't believe it. But just like the other day, I was saying like, and this was like in a positive stream. Like I was saying, like, dude, we're. I was talking to a lot of people that were in his chat that showed up because he wasn't streaming that day. And I was like, we're going to get Rand to chill on like boozing. I was like genuinely like stressed about like not even like stressed or anything like that, but like hoping like wishing well for the guy, like trying to help him out. I was, I was like jokingly saying like, we're going to get we're going to get Rand to to quit drinking by getting him to experiment with psychedelic mushrooms. <laughs> and like. It's a joke, you know what I mean? Like he could do it if he wanted, but like, how how are we gonna do that? It's just like a thing. Well, Rand's a drunk, but, and also he's got the same thing that I had, honestly, where you think you need that to perform, uh, and you can very easily, especially when you already like alcohol, Larry, uh, get into that. You're a drunk, right? I, you know, and even though I'm not drinking now, I'm still a drunk, there. right? And it's like, okay, I need this. This is like Popeye spinach, uh, and it can work. I made a lot of money. Just completely don't even remember anything about it, right? Several several hundred shows that I don't even remember. Content Larry. suffers though. Yes, well, it can work for a while. Larry, uh, but you know, the older you get, um, the more out of control you get, the liquor starts hitting you a little bit differently. People get tired of seeing it. You have fights that you shouldn't have had. You, you say things you shouldn't have said. Uh, it becomes a detriment over time. Uh, but the alcoholic brain and, you know, you thinking you need it to perform is still there. Uh, and it's very yeah. hard to break. You have to do a bunch of shows in a row to get that mindset going, uh, where you like, okay, I don't need this. I can do it without it. Um, but it's, it's very real. It's very real. Uh, and it's very and hard I'll, to get and out I'll, of. Go ahead. And I'll say this too. Like, I'll be clear. Like, yeah, I'm fucking like livid about this Rambot shit and like this NJP stuff. But, I still like right now, like as pissed off as I am, I truly do hope that he like chills out and like the drinking and stuff because it would just be beneficial to him, like as a human. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, I that shit. Mean. Like, dude, I had a close, like, just like last November, not this, not the one that just happened last month, last year. So it's a year and a month ago. A good friend of mine, 36 years old, man, drank himself like to death over, like, because. He needed to, he needed at the end needed to get a liver transplant but couldn't do it because he couldn't stay off the bottle long enough. So it's like he was 36 years old and like I hung out with this guy all the time. He was a he was like a fat guy. You know what I mean? He was a real chubby dude, cheerful, real fucking fun to hang around with. I used to smoke weed with him all the time. I used to work with his mom at at this nursing home um when I was like fucking 16 years old. I've known the guy forever. Passed away and at the end I hadn't seen him for like, you know, a year or so. 
and he was fucking skin and bone like the shit it like sucks the life out of you and that was a sobering moment for me and like dude, i like fucking broke down about that shit because it took like i took that there's there's like a time of introspection there where it's like he's three years older than me and like i like i'm not invincible like we are not invincible you get one go around here and over time your body just doesn't work and doesn't function as good as it used to everybody's and that shit like it when people say that it kills you like it is literally fucking killing you so like seeing that shit happen like i genuinely mean it like i wish the best for the guy like as a fucking human being but i'm never going to interact with him again like he's talking about me showing my true colors like wishing the best for you and like asking questions that I think would be beneficial for your audience and you to hear so you can just let go of this this dead end dream. Do you know what I mean? It's a dead end dream that you're participating in and that you with your audience, because you're on here doing this stuff and cheerleading for this shit, your audience is taking it serious. And I'm not shitting on you guys for believing in something. People have to believe in stuff. Frankly, the people who were the ones believing, they're the victims here. They're the fucking victims here. They believed in something and they they put they went at it. Like and they they did their best. Like the 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 people and shit like that. They did these things they thought they were doing well. They were misled. That's the fucking point. And Ranbot, me saying these things, I'm trying to like help him out. He might not like it, but that's the way it is. Ralph, when you're drinking, and like this is the way I was. I didn't want to fucking hear it, man. Someone tells you, hey, you need to ease up on the drinking and shit. And it's just like, hey, hey, fuck you. You know what I mean? You don't want to hear that shit. And you'll argue with people like, no, I don't have a drinking problem. As you as like I would sit there and like three or four nights a week, like when I like at night, when it's just me, oh, I'm just I'm the only one awake. I'd have like fucking 10 beers. You know what I mean? I know exactly what's no good. Mean. It's no good. And you know, of course, I know all these things and knew them even when I was drunk. It's, you still am. You're never like ex drunk, even if you're not drinking. Uh, but when you're sitting there by yourself, uh, getting drunk, like very drunk, that's a very bad sign. Uh, that's a sign of alcoholism, literally. Uh, and drinking yeah. should be a social thing, and it should be one or two. You shouldn't drink until you're drunk, even though I always would. <laughs> uh, but if you drink till you're drunk, that means you have a drinking problem because people who have control of their drinking, they just drink until they get a buzz, Larry. And that's when you're supposed to stop drinking, actually. And maybe you have a slip here and there, you know, that's one thing. But if you're consistently drinking to get drunk, you are a severe al alcoholic. Uh, and it's just no other way around it. And I don't like Rand. Obviously, we had a falling out. Uh, but part of me still cares about him a little bit. I know some people won't believe that. But, you know, I remember the group we used to have here on the kill stream, and you were one of those people, and we would have you in every Thursday night, and Dingo popping in, and Rand is here. We had a pretty, and other people too, by the way. We had a pretty fun. hellacious crew. Yeah, it was fun. That's what I'm saying. I kind of missed that. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, we had a hell of a grouping here, uh, and we don't anymore, although you and Dingo, some other people are coming back around. Uh, but Rand's still over there ranting and raving and you know mad about this mad about that it's like dude just let it go just let it and go. it's like rand do your own thing go ahead exactly do your own thing but like me saying all this stuff it's like rand i thought and think like you are a funny guy like i know like a lot of people might not agree with that like, yeah, I, you know but also like my, the, my sense of humor and like the show that i put out isn't for everybody either like it's not for like some people just aren't gonna like it some people think i'm annoying as fuck man but some people feel the same the same way about Rand. I think that at times Rand can be hilarious. Well, I it's think just so like, too. dude, you're like he's he has the same issue that fucking like TDS had the the Daily Show. Their show used to be hilarious. I used to love to listen to it, and then they get all like serious, the self serious like with this political stuff. And Sven was right. It fucking ruined the show. It made it like unlistenable. So like. Well, I'm just I, it, well when you're more the focused things I was on saying came party, from a good place right and well when you're more focused on party line or you can't say this because it contradicts with our party or we gotta look a little more upstanding and and this and that well it the entertainment suffers Larry because entertainment and it can be edutainment too right like you could be teaching somebody something or you know elucidating some issues or some cases and stuff that they might not know about otherwise and you know I try to do that too um, but when it's all super serious business all the time, that's not, 
a recipe for good entertainment. Uh, and it suffers. And Spin flat out did say, <laughs> you're right. I could hear Rand just like a vein. I could hear it. The vein popping out of his forehead. <laughs> he had just went off on you earlier in that show. And if and Spin yeah. just flat out says Larry was right. I'm like, oh fuck. They should have listened to Larry. And he's <laughs> yeah. like and you like look at the screen and his cat avatar is like having a fucking seizure. <laughs> it was fun. like I got a message last night. Um so a guy texted me and he's like, pay attention to the cat avatar as like <laughs> its eyes start to blink asynchronically, like, uh, or was so, like out of sync. And he's like, he's having a seizure and his brain is like losing the ability to function. And I'm like, I started paying attention to it. And like when bad things were getting said, he's over there like fucking, like fucking spazzing out. You know what I mean? Like, the cat's but doing it's like, this I want. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I'll say this again in the Rand thing, and I'll read Tony's stuff here in a minute too, but, um, you know, Rand, you don't need to suck off the NJP dick or the TRS dick, and you can still be friends with some of those guys or have them on or whatever. You could just stand on your own two feet. I know that's a shock, right? Uh, maybe you think you can't, but you, you absolutely could. Uh, and you didn't think you, you have could. an audience already. Right. right. Well, he didn't think he could <laughs> quit the garbage truck either. And I said, Rand, why don't you just quit? You're miserable. I'm the one who talked him into that. I'll say this every time because I did. He, he always tell me how you know miserable he was and he hated his job and you know this and that. I said, well, Rand, just quit, right? You only have one life. Yeah. If it's making you miserable. Just fucking quit. He's like, you really think I could do this streaming full time? I was like, yeah, I think you probably could. And if it doesn't and work he's out, been whatever. Doing it. Yeah, and he has. I was right. <laughs> That's true. It's I like, was right. It's like, so it's like Rand. You don't like. He could do a stream, like reacting to shit that he himself fi that finds is hilarious you know what i mean yes. and like this he wouldn't if he would stop listening to these fucking podcasts and just like you know have more of like oh he says he has a personal life i don't fucking know him personally so i'm not going to say any like get into that shit but it's like dude you'd have a bunch of free time you know what i'm saying you wouldn't have to do like 10 hour streams if you came there with like shit that you had prepared you do like a, a concise like three four hour stream even like you have a lot of shit on there you got people come on and whatnot and then just put that out each night you don't need to fucking i don't know just like i'm not telling him how to do his show it's just like dude i was just saying that like the njp was fucking stupid and like i think you should chill out on boozing so much and it's like how the fuck am i the bad guy I don't understand. Well, when you're drunk, you don't want to hear those sorts of things. Um, Nakodi, you said that yourself. Nakodi uh, for five says, five fist pump Ralph reps, please. Also leaked surveillance footage of Hunter Avalon plus his date getting robbed. Is that really? Oh, no. Is that really footage? No, it's, uh, I think that's a joke. All right, I'll pull that up, too. Uh, but give me a second on that, and I will do the reps here in a second. My arms are so tired. I got a little carried away on Saturday night <laughs> with, the, with the weights. They came in early. I have weights on the stream now. Yeah. Instead of doing shot, shots, I've been doing um, curls and uh, whatever these are called, uh, where you lift them up like that. Uh, so trying to get uh, some healthy habits on the stream instead of, you know, do five shots or whatever. I don't want to end up like Blade, who we'll talk about uh later in the show as well uh and then james gartner says keith, the... K keith richard's birthday it'll just be him and ralph <laughs> hopefully a couple girls well yes there will be uh he says don't interrupt content okay i won't but i'll pull that up and play it after uh and happy birthday to the legendary keith richards the rolling stones probably my favorite band actually it's um, like 107 years old today yeah, I was reading an article about him recently, and he said uh, they they had finally made him give up smoking, and he's literally like eighty. Uh, so, but he didn't give up drinking. Uh, so, you know, but he's Keith Richards, Rand. He can live through anything. He used to be a heroin addict too. Uh, so he's just blessed. He's the, co the cockroach. <laughs> Yeah. The cockroach of humanity. Right. Yeah. There's literally, I don't even know, a million jokes about him uh, in that vein. He's hey, Keith he's, Richards, hey. right? We can't all do it like that. Uh, and it's Ralph's <laughs> grandfather. Yeah, Keith right. Richards. It's <laughs> how Ralph gets away with the shit he does. He's related to Keith Richards. That's, that's how. right. I got a little Keith Richards in me. Um, okay. You're British. Yes, that's right. British. Um, okay. Actually, I do have a little uh, British heritage there on my mom's side, but. Um, okay, thank you for that, James. Uh, any questions you have in, uh, send those in. I'll ask those as well. We've gotten a couple already. Um, 
Okay, we'll, we'll come back to Rand. Let me read this Tony Hovater statement just so we can get them both in there. Is that okay, Larry? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I don't, it doesn't sound like you care much about Tony Hovater, but um, that's okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I wasn't even on TRS whenever he got in, like involved with um, NJP, and I've only met. I've met him like twice in my life. So, and well, we see, spoke like for two minutes. I don't really know him. Well, yeah, I kind of. I know who he is. Of following them, and but, then Dingo came on here, and I was like, I don't even know who Tony Hovater is. Uh, and he he knew some about him, and I was like, oh okay, but you know I. I, I kind of fell out, fell out of following their day to day or whatever, and I had no clue who this guy was. Uh, now this picture of him on the screen is from the New York Times. Uh, Monoxide talked about this on Saturday. He invited a uh, New York Times uh, writer to basically live with him for a week, and then he got doxxed. Which I mean, well, that sort of thing happens, Larry. Uh, now, <laughs> uh, okay, I'll read yeah. this from Tony. H Not a good strategic decision, uh, but regardless, I, you know, I've cooperated on some articles here and there, and I would say out of the five to ten that I've ever cooperated with or quoted on uh, only one of those did I feel happy with and that was Bloomberg believe it or not which is shocking uh, to say but uh, the Bloomberg guy was actually very fair to me and didn't call me you know white supremacist or anything like that um, but I do remember a BuzzFeed article that helped break up my marriage uh, actually because <laughs> I convinced my then wife uh, who co-founded this show, actually, speaking of British, Pakistani British. Uh, and he quoted her, and she was getting pilloried all around the Internet. Now I was used to it, but she wasn't, uh, and really caused her a lot of mental stress and stress on my marriage. So I would advise people, be very careful uh, when you cooperate on a story. But anyway, this is Tony Hovater. He says, I'm just going to read this all the way through. This thing's kind of long. But first, I want to apologize to all NJP supporters and directors who believed in us for what has been happening. It wasn't my choice to dissolve the party in favor of decentralized shitposting groups. NJP's growth made TRS nervous that we would overtake and muscle them out. Okay. Uh, though untrue. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's kind of. That's, kind that's of just. I mean, well, look, NJP, I, that's ridiculous, honestly. Um, without TRS, there is no NJP, Larry. That's kind of retarded, uh, in my opinion. But yeah, um, whatever. No, it's true. Yeah, I mean, that's just dumb. I don't know. But uh, NJP's growth made TRS nervous that we would overtake and muscle them out. Though untrue that TRS wouldn't have a place, it speaks to the character of some that their greatest fear was that NJP would succeed. I didn't want to have to make a public post about this, but the amount of bullshit being spread about me to try and cover people's asses is pathetic. Now a few people are pretending I'm going to dox anyone while actively encouraging people to post my address. If that isn't projection, I don't know what is. All right. Initially, it was just Jesse doing his usual bit of shit-talking on their forum. He made up retarded stories about me secretly going to a bank in Chicago to steal money. Yeah, we did quote that on air. Maybe it's not true. I don't know. Even though I was not at a bank and tons of people knew I was passing through Chicago. He claimed I used party money to travel to Germany when actually I went on a cheap and quick off-season visit on a flight deal that I'd been saving for a little while. Saving for for a little while. By the way, if you're writing, don't put four twice in a sentence back to back because that's incorrect syntax. Um Think of something else. You don't say four four. That's really bad, but whatever. Uh, but since then, he has gone on a drunken rant calling me a grifter, a striker, a Mexican parasite. He did say that. And Mike, a bitch with a half Jew wife. Now, I, so Monoxide said he wasn't talking about Mike, that he was talking about, um, fuck, somebody else. I forget now. But I took it as him talking about Mike at first, too. But uh, he says, I feel it's pretty apparent who was causing a lot of problems. He and TRS have a long history of lying about people and then closing ranks in hopes that people will just ignore it long enough to move on. I was foolish enough to think that those days were behind them or that the mission of the NJP meant something to them. For a Larry, what are you doing to your mic? Oh, shit. I'm putting my computer. I'm adjusting my computer desk. I'm sorry. I no, thought it was fine. muted. Yeah, it's, it's loud. Uh, <laughs> for a couple of months now, there had been a concerted effort to try to undermine the party from within. I was aware of a few people involved, but I was trying to figure out the full extent. This is actually something that Stryker had assumed was going on, and he was mostly correct, though not completely right about motives or who all was involved. There were a few different elements at play. The first was a handful of our staff made mostly of people from Antelope Hill Publishing. They became disgruntled over time because of a falsely perceived lack of momentum. In their opinion, things were not developing because I didn't validate them enough for their work. Their work, while helpful at times, eventually turned into 
sending me pointless memos such as asking TRS not to cuss on air, ideas to make dozens of redundant groups within groups, paranoid requests to not send mail, recommendations that we fill TRS with shows done by their friends that nobody has ever heard of, requests to have a party historian write down the stories of individual pool parties, etc. That kind of sounds cool, the last one, but uh, anything and everything other than relevant ideas about how to get around censorship and actually grow the party is all I got. I already know that the claims about these memos will be denied, but I have them all saved. All right, Gator. All these, <laughs> all these memos were seen by Mike or discussed with him. His reply was nearly only ever, oosh, nothing would be done. So Mike's claim of knowing nothing about the internal dealings of the party is just a lie to try to make it seem like I was the only problem. Instead of breaking it to the staff that Mike couldn't be bothered to reply or even read anything they were sending or planning, I allowed him to save face by not commenting further. The smart decision would have been to let these people go as it became clear that they weren't interested in anything legitimately productive and only odd self-gratifying pet projects. What really set them off was when Colin, our HR director, what? Was being unnecessarily hostile. <laughs> and, what? Use a different title, man. Like, I don't even know. Colin, our HR director, was being unnecessarily hostile in a chat with leaders, so I actually removed him from a chat. This is how you know they were very serious people. I assumed all these issues could be fixed in the new year, but as always, instead of coming to someone directly with a problem, white nationalists tend to quietly sulk and nurse imagined grudges and form internet support chats where they complain to one another and reinforce their issues. So naturally, they start, start a chat. Yeah, that part's true. <laughs> Um, it's not just white nationalists, by the way, but yes, uh, added it's just to, humans in general, right? Yeah. But. Yeah. That's kind of a human thing. Uh, but I've noticed that myself, uh, added to this discontented staff chat were a few supporter group directors who, in addition to being very mad at striker felt I at Mike's request unfairly removed their friend from a staff position after he stated that Mike was a fat faggot and Warren was a worthless <laughs> loser. Well, <laughs> oh my God. It really wasn't a lot to ask that our staff not be actively hostile to the party, so I complied with the request. Another concern they had was slow influx of vetting requests. Turns out our IT director just never bothered to look into it. They were going to a different email address. Mike and I noticed that many of the talking points and complaints Jesse was making were identical to, identical to the ones some of these guys were using in a few chats. So we knew he was obviously feeding this discontent, discontent and was being fed by it in return. He had previously stated that he wanted to separate NJP and TRS. That doesn't sound like the dumbest idea, but so after I will say this. Go the, ahead. No, go ahead. About the vetting stuff, because this is really long, is that um I had I've dude, I've been hearing complaints about it taking a long time to get vetted, and they've talked about that in their show. They're like, Oh yeah, just wait. Um it's taking a long time. That like has existed since before NJP was a thing. Like um I could think of three specific conversations where that's come to mind where like I someone will I'll be talking to someone or they're like a they like listen to the program or some shit like that and they want to get vetted and I'll like send their email like directly to um well in this case it was my my co host because he was like the guy that was there and it, I mean even then it like took a long ass time for him to get it figured out, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I hear him talk about that a lot, uh, and it seemed like um, a pressure point, fissure point, I guess would be more accurate. By the way, I'm still going to do those five reps. Let me finish reading this, Nicody. I promise I will. Uh, so, okay, so let's see. So after causing many problems for NJP in the past with his manic depressive outbursts endorsing genocide, whining about COVID, or directly attacking people in groups, I said, okay, fine, let's do it. I found it strange that after NJP paid what we owed TRS, he would start making the problems he did. But since he does this in cycles, it was worth just moving on. His problems were purely emotional and could never actually be resolved. Mike and I discussed some solutions on the way back from our Midwest regional meetup. I called Warren to discuss some of them. In the discussion, I informed him that the current plan TRS had was to have him fill in on the Tuesday show for a pay cut. Keep in mind, Mike and Jesse never let Warren know his job was constantly on the line. Mike even begged me to handle Jesse when he was going to fire Warren for being a charity case with no severance out of nowhere in November. I did handle that problem and saved his job through to at least January. That, in addition to Odyssey likely being done soon, would bring Warren down to a poverty wage that nobody could support themselves on, let alone their family with. 
It wasn't right to not at least let him know. By the way, I don't think Odyssey's going to be done. They're trying to sell it. I don't know if they have already, but I, you know, it's still running. I, I don't know that it's going to be done, but anyway, uh, it's possible. Uh, since Jesse was actively trying to separate from and undermine NJP, I suggested that we make NJP Radio a thing on the site. It would host the weekly report, modern politics, and something else to give people strictly political content and updates. I think this made Mike panic because he was no longer going to be able to do his usual kicking of the can on these big interpersonal and business problems. So in typical fashion, he chose to fold and use the discontent of a few unhelpful staff members and supporter groups as an excuse to give up. It was worth giving up on the NJP so he could go back to being a podcaster and nothing else. He has since made abundantly clear that's all he ever wanted to do. It's very Well, he's a podcaster. It's very sad, but that is ultimately the truth and what it came down to. Mike's inability to make hard decisions or to make changes that would grow the party. Why Warren decides to delude himself into thinking that people that constantly shit on him and insult him publicly are actually working in his interest, I will never know. This isn't the first time Warren has done this, and it won't be the last. Unfortunately, it will never work out for him. Warren is someone who honestly believes in the cause. I've never doubted that. He just lacks judgment and always finds himself being exploited and tricked by bad actors trying to use his good name for their ends. Um, so the next time they talk about a few feral blacks that kill a white kid or some Jew that does something evil, know that it's just for entertainment. They were in a position to do something about it, but chose instead to revert to 2015-style shit-posting podcasts. Hey, wait a minute. De <laughs> Deracinated drinking <laughs> clubs and beach parties. It was just too hard for them. What makes me sick is the amount of money that NJP had from people who truly believed in what we were doing is just is now just going to be redirected to TRS for more podcasts and cover songs. Though I'm sad the party is dead, I'm grateful that I will never have to speak to people this self-centered and cowardly ever again. Now, I think we're getting close to the end, but very funny that people are pretending I'm going to dox them based on stupid rumors. I wonder if Mike thinks that's true. If it's not true, I wonder why TRS is allowing that rumor to be to spread on bang. All comments need approval on their shows right now, but there is no moderation when people post outright outright lies. Strange to let that narrative continue. Mike must have felt silly. I think this is the last one. Mike must have felt silly making his ridiculous retcon. Po it was kind of retconning, to be fair. We said that earlier. His ridic I mean, there's some bullshit in this one, too, though. But uh, his ridiculous retcon post, because he knows he's just lying. He knows that people like the Cascadia guys, Hines, all the AHP people, and Colin were all people he wanted fired for arguing with him him, Warren, and Stryker about removing McKevitt. After that, they all argued that activism was a bad idea and that we were all going to get doxxed and other dread bullshit. Stryker warned that these guys were snakes in the grass, and he was right. So Mike made an alliance of convenience so that he can go back to being a full-time podcaster. It's that easy. And it wasn't easy reading all that because it was very long. But um, thoughts, Larry? Sorry, I had to read it all. Uh, I'd have to go back through and... <laughs> on like the whole thing but i mean i don't like i said i wasn't in the njp i you know what i mean Why or not? affiliated i was never like a, i thought it was dumb <laughs> so i just that was a waste of time so i like i i started just doing my show on odyssey I was on americana for a little bit but there was like a back and forth with shit there so i was just like ah i'm not gonna fuck that also keep but, talking because um, i'm doing my reps here well, yeah, I'm trying to find something here, actually. Someone um, <clears throat> looking here in the chat, they keep, people keep saying about, like, oh, they were, they're were separate entities and shit like that. And I was on stream last night, and I actually found this um, audio where they talk about the merger and shit like that. Let me see where in the list it is. Um, uh, it's back pretty far, actually. Fuck got to find this and it's going to no, be fine. impossible I mean, the thing about njp they were worried about njp you know getting bigger than tr i mean that doesn't really make sense um <laughs> there is no njp without trs as you've seen uh so i don't think that that was um that seems like fanciful thinking uh that part but there did seem it was kind of you know there seemed to be some nuggets of truth in there uh, mixed with some some of his own retconning, which is kind of how these things go uh, in the internet drama space. But um, I don't know. Uh, I think they both. Shit! Have if I some if retconning. I play something, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Go ahead. Um, if if I play something, will you and people be able to hear it? I think so. If your pastor is working, actually. 
I can actually just forward it to you. Uh, there you are. Um, boom. It's there. Go to 18 seconds of that. Or, I mean, you can just play it up till like 25 seconds. All right. I'm going to hit it right now. Uh, and if people want to become. Now, this was on uh, a, TRS a, a, when eligible I think it was to like attend. A, uh, I think there's going to be. I think some... it was paywall, but I could be no, wrong right. about that. But this was. Uh, and if people want to. Hold on. Let me put it. Yeah, there's uh, a. And if there's a. Sorry, I'm eating beef jerky, trying to get some protein. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> instead of chips or some bullshit, I got some beef jerky here. But um, there is a there is a Telegram that basically just posts all their stuff. But um, okay, I'll play this. Uh, and if people want to become uh, a, a eligible to attend, uh, I think there's going to be there's some changes coming to the way the pool parties are going to be done. Um, and I think the naming convention of the pool parties is going to change as well to uh, National Justice Party supporter groups. Uh, TRS will become the official radio network of the NJP, uh, and y there will be options for getting vetted. You can be vetted for one of these groups, or you can be vetted just to be able to an attend an event. All right, I played the first 30 seconds. Um... There was. I mean, what did he say? Like... He was hosting the show there with Warren. That was Jazz Hands and Warren were doing the show there. So I, I think that like it was understood by everybody like what that was that that's what that was gonna be. Yeah, pool parties, TRS, IRL groups will now be National Justice Party supporter groups. Um I'll read the other bullet points from this. TRS is officially uh, part of NJP. NJP donations equals TRS subs. If you get vetted, you will become an NJP supporter. No other IRL group choice. If you are a Christian, you can still join, but NJP needs to come first. Wait, did they actually say that? <laughs> Hold on. That's, uh... Yeah. That seems it's, a little drastic. Just, <laughs> just play the whole clip. It's actually, it's fucking unhinged. Let's <laughs> just play the whole clip, because I, I read that, I'm like, well, wait. Uh, you know, you're telling a believer to put a political party over their religion, their faith in God. Uh, you're not even supposed to put your fa God's supposed to come first. What do you mean? Even your family's supposed to come exactly. second to that. Like what the exactly. fuck? Okay. That's a little drastic. All right. You know what? I'm just going to play the whole thing. You ready? Want to start it over? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start over. All right. I'll start whenever you want to count down. I'll, Cause I got to play right, it for yeah. the people listening to my That's end. fine. Uh, so uh, we'll go on go three, two, one, go. All right. Three, two, one, go. Uh, and if people want to become uh, a, a eligible to attend, uh, I think there's going to be there's some changes coming to the way the pool parties are going to be done. Um, and I think the naming convention of the pool parties is going to change as well to uh, National Justice Party supporter groups. Uh, TRS will become the official radio network of the NJP. Uh, and there will be options for getting vetted. You can be vetted for one of these groups or you can be vetted just to be able to an attend an event. Uh, of course, we hope that you would want to join your local group and get connected with other guys. But, you know, we understand that there are also people who may be, um, especially if an event is upcoming, they just want to attend the event. And I think that's going to be facilitated. So more on the way with that. But one of the biggest things, and I just want to reiterate this is, um, if you're going to get vetted and you're going to join one of the groups, uh, it's essentially you're going to become a supporter of the, the, the NJP. It's all part of the same thing that we're doing. NJP isn't just an option. It's not like something on the a la carte menu that you can also do if you're part of one of these groups. It is the thing that we all do. Um, and if you're not interested in that, that's okay. Uh, we would just ask that this be limited to people who are interested in, in putting everything forward uh, for that. So, and uh, join us, get everybody involved, you know, get as many friends that you're on the fence. Uh, there's never been a better time than now. And we're even seeing Warren, you saw some anecdotal sort of uh, out in the wild reactions to NJP where uh, some things have popped up. Haven't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So first of all about the, uh, the, the supporter groups, pool parties uh and the whole the, the direction we're going in this i mean i just i want everybody to know this is not njp is not just a side project as you said it's not just something that is like okay this is a good promo idea we'll have a political party and then we can you know we'll call it that and that way we can we can advocate stuff do more than just podcasts 
we are all, all of us, and not just the seven committee members, but everyone who's involved with this project, you Jazz Hands and everyone else, we are committed to uh, changing the, let's, uh, I won't say take power, uh, that's what we're committed to doing, but I will say, I'll put it more modestly, we're committed to changing the power dynamic in the, in the United States, the political power dynamic. Uh, I would rather we don't have guys in elected office yet but still be able to put pressure on the system in other ways. Uh, that is political power, but that is what this whole project is about, and uh, and all this is an outgrowth of the Right Stuff radio network. That's what laid the foundation. That is the roots of this whole thing, but it's, it is growing into something more than that. Uh, and so uh, the radio network is going to be a part of that. It's always going to be here, but... I, I'm very happy that with the direction that everyone seems to want to take this, and everybody's ready for it. And and everyone is part of NJP. Like, if you sign up and get vetted and, and you become a supporter, um, there's going to be a commercial that we play that's really a video, but you'll hear the audio over the commercial break for how to become a supporter. And the nice thing is, too, is if you're a minimum supporter, uh, your paywall is going to be included in that. So... You get a two for one deal. It's a uh, buy one get one bogo, as they say in the in the business what world. Bogo. Uh, you get to <laughs> be an NJP supporter, and you also get to be uh, a what a deal. Sub. And why wouldn't you want to be both of those things? So uh, that's how that's going to work. Um, and then yeah, there's going to be more coming out on this uh, eventually. But but yeah, essentially, it, it's <clears throat> you can be. You know, you can be a Christian, you can have, you know, different beliefs about various things, whatever, um, but it's all going to fall under the paradigm of, of, of NJP. Um, it's, it's, it's not going to be something that you do as kind of a side. It's like a a la carte menu option, like I was saying. Um, so but we have uh, to do it. join us. Yeah, we have to yeah. do it. We have to do it. We, we have, have no to. choice. Atheists have to. Atheists have to tell Christians how to practice their religion. Have to do it. Yeah, I I don't even know how that's. <laughs> you would maybe just be better off not saying something like that, Larry. Um, but um... hey, can I tell you one thing, Ralph? Sure. The only thing that is as certain as death and taxes is that that was not a cult. <sighs> that's literally bullshit. <laughs> um. You know, put us yes. above God, and you know, if you don't believe in God, no big deal. But if you do, that is a big deal, Larry. That's kind of a deal breaker. You can be a, <laughs> you can be a Christian, but it's going to fall under the NJP paradigm because the NJP created God. I guess. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, don't... they're under God's under their umbrella. I don't know. I don't know, Chairman. Mike, the creator of the know. universe. I don't know, man. Uh, I'd actually never heard that audio uh, until today. Um, and then it, it comes off <laughs> poorly as well because it's like it, it's a it's a sales pitch, but it's like a used car salesman pitch kind of. You know what I mean? It's got that kind of feel. It's like, oh, this is such a deal. You're going to get the TRS bonus, and why wouldn't you want to support both? And this, Well, some people didn't want to support both, or they would have. From the start, and now you're trying to force them into it, basically. Um, which exactly, Sven, Sven was right whenever he was saying that, like the NJP, like was a, it was like a parasitic thing to TRS, like the thing that he was doing. Do you know what I mean? Like he was right when he said that. That's 100 percent correct. But I want to point something out too here. This is um, okay. okay this is a two part thing. So the first part of this is you have a person who I think could be loosely described as a member of said call in the comment section of the stream I have up saying, hey, all I hear is two believers excited about co-founding a pro-white group that they thought they, they thought they would succeed. It's like this is a person that's in the cult. Like that's what he hears. But like to people who are outside of it, we're kind of like, what the fuck? The people in Heaven's Gate didn't think that they were in a cult. They thought they were catching a ride on a spaceship at the tail end of a comet. But the people outside of that were like, you're fucking crazy. And you castrated yourself. You know, like they did. They, they actually did that shit. It's the, like the parallels. You see the parallels? I do. I do. Um, but the second, the second part of this, then, the same guy says, the Christian stuff is weird. This is the first time I've heard that. Is, the, is that real? 
So he's he's kind of like, whoa, what the fuck? To to the Christian shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like these people aren't like impervious to like. I mean, they they under, they can understand some things. They just need to have the evidence like played for them or like I don't know. They get that. I don't. And if you can't if you can't accept the evidence when it's played and like laid in front of your face, then you're just a hope. You're just hopeless. Do you know what I mean? And it's like you don't even have to not let like just if you want to, if you want to continue to support these guys. Just listen to their podcasts. That's it. Like, if they're go like, <laughs> it's that simple. If they're going to go back to doing their podcasts, they're podcast hosts. They should. They should do that. Well, that's the only real answer. And I saw dot 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 say it in my chat. The only real answer is to go back to podcasting. Uh, and you know, Hovater, he may have some valid complaints, and you know, I think he does. But some of his stuff's bullshit too. But it's like, well, they're podcast hosts, Tony. They were never fucking this vanguard party. That was a LARP. Go back to podcasting. That's really the only option, right? Like, yeah, that's it. It's like if you got like just, just go back to pot. Like, you, just go back to doing your show the way it was. Take a couple weeks off. Yeah, you know, reset. Get yeah, get your Christmas mind out anywhere. of like the, the yeah the politics shit. Um, and just come back and do your show the way that it was. Just hit like a reset. People fucking do different content all the time. And the people that want to listen to you, they'll listen. And then you can have people come back. You're kind of just like building up. Like maybe the, maybe the building's not leveled. Maybe it's just the, it was taken off like it halved or something like that. I don't know any of that shit. I'm just saying my point is that the NJP was stupid. If you don't want like if you think, oh, that's like you're super sad about that and you still want to support them, just listen to their fucking podcast then. It's that simple. Yeah, and I think if they if they do that, get back to basics. I don't, I don't think they'll go away. You know, I think they still got a lot of people who would support that. Um, the political party stuff, uh, you know, criticism of Mike. We've had plenty on this show, but he's right. Like that shit's over. Now he should have never done this in the first place, obviously. But that's hindsight. Move on. Yeah, take, but what's done take, is done, right? Right. What's done is <laughs> done. Take a couple weeks off, like you said. It's Christmas anyway. I don't think anybody that still supports them would begrudge that. Take a couple weeks off, regroup for the new year, and come back with some good shows, some funny stuff, and right, like. Uh... And and here's the thing: is that like it's not, um, in response to a, a few things here in my chat, they're like, oh, I don't hear any Bible bashing or like, um, they didn't mention any Christian stuff in that upon a cursory listen. It's like, dude, they said that like you can be a Christian, but it falls under the njp paradigm so it's like you like they're they're telling you that your priorities are going to be out of whack like what did like what isn't like the like what did um jesus say you, that you can't serve two masters that's literally what he says i think yeah. <laughs> um no so it's like oh it's you're gonna fall under the njp paradigm like so i don't know Oh, I don't hear any Bible bashing. Oh, it's just going against like the like the words of of Jesus Christ Himself. So, well, yeah, and it basically means well, if if your religion comes in conflict conflict with NJP, well, NJP comes first. And you know, somebody <laughs> serious about their religion is not going to, I mean, shouldn't accept something like yeah. that. <laughs> and don't be surprised whenever you get to and whenever you get there, and Jesus says, "Depart from me, I I did not know you." Well, and just imagine if, well, think of a, of a major political party. The Republicans came out and just said, well, you know, it's a Republican Party over Jesus. Sorry. Um, you know, it, it falls under our party. Well, I mean, that would be a major faux pas. <laughs> Even the Democrats yeah. don't say that, Larry. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of political malpractice, too. Um, you know, even if you felt that way. You don't say that um, because it's a turn. Oh my god! <laughs> and you got a guy in my chat now is like anything to rip oh it rip away from what anything to rip power away from white people. Am I right? It's like oh my god! Like this is. Well, they didn't have is, any uh, power, Larry. What the fuck? <laughs> it's exactly. It's I don't even. I don't know. NJP was nothing. It was an LLC. Like Monoxide said the other yeah. night, and you know maybe they did some good protests here and there, or whatever. But like that was and LARPing look, shit, right? They and, didn't run anybody. Go ahead. And outside the LLC thing, like Sven himself just said that it was that it was bullshit. Like we don't even have to like like people be like, the, people will like nitpick and they'll get into an argument about the LLC shit. Sven himself said that the, that the project itself, like I don't care what label it's under, 
He said it was bullshit. All right, that's it. End of story. And he like, said it. That's his opinion. Clearly. And he came back. He came back the next day because people were like, "Oh, he was just drunk and had like an emotional outrage." There were messages that were over that were on Telegram where he was saying like, "No, I stand behind everything I said." Like, don't don't like hide it behind the bottle or something. Well, a lot of what he said was dead on. Um, most of it, actually. Now, you know, Monarch said yeah. there was some retconning, too, that he didn't agree with, and I understand that. But uh, a lot of his analysis was was spot on. Uh, and again, you I know, agreed with a lot of what he said. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, like, it's hard to disagree with a lot of those points. And, you know, I, I understand people being disillusioned or feeling bad about it or like they got had or whatever. Um, and you know, they've been hyping this up for years and brand, you know, NJP is going to do this and that. Well, that was always bullshit, Larry. I don't know. Um, best to just cut your losses, go back to podcasting, have fun with it too. Clearly this was a detriment to fun. And in this online space, if you're not having fun, everybody can see it. And eventually it's going to be a bad problem for you. Uh, if you can't do this and have fun at the same time. You're fucked. Uh, and there's been some times when I wasn't having fun, too. I'm having fun now. But, you know, it's uh, it's contagious, right? People see you're not having fun. And people uh, want to attack you or they see a weak point or your own people become disillusioned. You see all this infighting stuff. Um, you have to have a, a joy for the fight, Larry. Um, and, it's, and it's like Sven knows this, and he said as much, where he was like, like he understands that humor and like the way that they presented their content before NJP was that's what made them popular. That's why I started listening to their show. I thought it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And I then I started listening to other do. shit that was on the site. Yeah, it's exactly what it was. It what like I, I feel like somewhere along the way, and I mean they might disagree or, or something like that. Um with like my uh like my idea of like what happened is like somewhere along the way they started to just take themselves more serious i mean obviously but after you speak to the to people for so long and you get them like spun up on all this stuff like they're going to expect something and i think that with what happened in 2020 they oh well this is just the thing we're going to do but like there was no qualification there for it whatsoever and it was built around like cults of personality and it turned these people into like fucking zombies almost mantra repeating zombies and i'm looking through here um apparently sven wasn't on today i don't know if that means anything or he's just taking some time off but uh, i see some people commenting on that i see the show uh posted in a in a certain spot uh and he he wasn't on there on there today um this one comment says, of course, this is critical of Sven, but it says he can barely keep up doing three shows a week for his job and yet expects TRS will survive this. LML. Sven will, or maybe that was about Mike, I don't know. It says Sven will absolutely. Well, at the same time. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but on that first one that you read, if it's in Sven's defense, if like I'm, I'm trying, I'm going to try, I'm trying to like be as like fair as I possibly can here. In his defense, like if that's the case and people think he's struggling to get through the shows, maybe he is. Maybe this shit has just like he's just worn the fuck out because he's watching the thing that like he built be like pulled down into the fucking gutter by something else. I mean, if you look at it from his point of view, like that would wear on a person. Well, yeah. And he even said that specific thing. He's like, this thing we built was great. And it was rolling and and JP fucked it up, right? Dude, it's tough, it's, man. Yeah. Um, and like, they I were would be highly fucking pissed off, too. Yes. I don't blame him. Um, I'd be pissed, too. And so it's like this thing was going great, and, you know, we had all these people loving it, and then the NJP thing came along, and maybe it's okay for a while, but you see a slow degre degradation of the main product. The main product's always TRS. Right? Uh, yeah. And he called it a side project for a reason. It is a side project. The main project is TRS. Uh, so, you know, I couldn't really disagree with too much of anything he said when it came to, um, you know, analyzing that problem. I, I think all that was spot on. Uh, and I'm looking through uh, 
your chat here. Um, oh, they're talking about Rand calling the cops. Yeah, he no. would arrest me. For <laughs> prank I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, I prank called him. And I think I said I was with the Space you, Force or something. Or, or something no, when did or, you get out of the Australian prison? I'm familiar with the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I may have said something. I was uh, special. You're like, Rand, Rand, I'm not going to jail, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> What's the dumbest thing ever? He he said he reported me to the Australian police, uh, which is it's an extraditable offense, dude. Right? Shockingly, the federales here in Mexico didn't give a fuck. I, I know that that's a that's a shock, but he said that he legitimately called up the police about this, which is probably a mistake. Also, <laughs> sn snitching literally, but uh, you know, you can leave that to the side if you'd like, but. Rand himself is persona non grata in Australia, and he told me he was on a watch list. Probably not a good idea to call the police. I don't know, but uh, he said he did that, uh, and so I don't know if he actually did, but nothing nothing came out of it, of course, um, except Rand getting very worked up, and he still mentions this to this day. If I was him, I would just quietly drop that talking point, but he doesn't, Larry. Uh, and I'm still waiting for the knock at the door from the federales here. Uh, I don't think <laughs> on the ground, so mate. Fucking <laughs> on the ground. It, yeah, but it's like ran the description he gave me. He's like, he's a short, fat man. Fucking <laughs> like it's like he's like Ralph's not. They'd be like, oh, I might fucking you. You're not the same guy. And go back and like, <laughs> like <laughs> they go back and like fucking fight him for filing a false report or some shit. I'm pretty sure Rand's fatter than me now. I'm 180 pounds, uh, so I'm fairly certain. I've hey, you seen weigh some photos. He looks a little plump there, but uh, but anyway. You weigh four pounds more than me, dude. I'm getting there. Yeah, 180 pounds. I mean, you weigh four pounds less than me. Really? I weigh well, you're taller than me, though. So. Um, yeah, I'm six two, 184 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If day. I was six two, I would be. Uh, fully in it right um but uh yeah 180 hey man work. you get on them Go you get on them weights man you could be a fucking superhuman i'm trying i'm trying and uh wearing size large now uh which i just bought this shirt yesterday size l the first l i've taken in some months uh mm -hmm. and took it willingly uh because i was shocked i can't even remember wearing a size i remember being in junior high and like wearing 2xl like that's how long it's been since i've worn an mm -hmm. l so uh, I was pretty stoked. 180 is 180 is good for your height. You're like, yeah. I don't know. You're like, I've met you before. You're like five eight, five nine. Yeah, that's my height. not five one, contrary to uh, popular reports. No, I've, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, hung out, I've hung out with Ralph before. We smoked weed together, Ralph. We did. <laughs> yeah. We did. We smoked weed together. The devils led us there. Uh, good by a bridge. Yes, that's right. Someone else was there <laughs> with us, but we won't get into that. But. Uh, <laughs> There were, there were there were there were two people there with us. That's true. That's true. Oh well, you know these things happen. But um, I don't know. Where does Rand go from here, Larry? Honestly, um, I don't care. I'm gonna finish. <laughs> I'm gonna finish going over the rest of his stream, and uh, I'm just gonna every time that someone tells me that he's talking shit, I'm just gonna pull up the part in which he's talking shit and i'm gonna just go over it on my stream and that's it but if he just shuts the fuck up and like leaves me alone like that then i don't give a fuck where he goes if he keeps trying to do what he's doing i think eventually maybe people will get like tired of it but i don't know dude some of those people in that chat are just like absolute retards well, let's hopeless be, let's be real uh, and you know, one or two decent cube members, most of them are idiots too, though. Uh, like I hear him talk and it's like, okay, dude. Um, Hitler, did I mean, you play an audio for some of them. And... I'm like, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Adolf go ahead. Hitler was the, Adolf Hitler was the president of Czechoslovakia in 1954. It's like, oh my God, dude, this fucking guy. It's like, geez, the German would say some like just wrong shit. Haven't read a book in their life. It's really bad. Some of them were were going at him though, actually. Uh, on some, I think he said Cowboy was. I know him. He he's been in the kill stream. Oh my god! Before. Yeah, I gotta stop you, dude. Now we got another person from Rand's chat. He's like, so Ralph is now good people and a beacon of the right wing and white nationalist. It's like, dude. He's what like you, I... Americans. LOL. It's like, bro. It's like I do a fucking comedy podcast. I am. This is response to Randbot. Like, Ralph is not 
a fucking white nationalist. Like, I don't come on Ralph's show to fucking spread the gospel of white nationalism. I come on the show to shoot the shit with Ralph. The last time I was on here, we talked about wrestling. Like, what's an entertainment like, program that happens to overlap with <laughs> some white nationalist figures here and there because I have them on. It's a talk show, an entertainment talk show. Uh, and no, I've never. Ralph and I have never talked about politics. Yeah, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, bucket a Mexican. So, you know, was married to a Pakistani. So like, I, you know, I don't think I've ever claimed that, although I've done, you know, if we want to stack up who's done what, uh, for the white race, first off I've, uh, procreated, uh, for one. Uh, <laughs> and so that would be one and have platformed many, many, uh, white nationalists, but no, I've never claimed to be a beacon of white nationalists. He was. He was he was joking, and I feel like a retard. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, I hear that sometimes, though, and I'm like, okay, dude. Like, it's a fucking Larry Bro's down bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's a white fat factionalist until recently. That's true. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's actually. You know what Larry is? He's a retard, folks. That's what he is. He's he like... smokes weed. You can't trust that guy. Uh, that was the thing that really yeah, got we, me. It's like all these drunks, and I'm like, okay, dude, like just chill out. His 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 brain is addled with bong resin, folks. He's <laughs> dumb as fuck. That weed is in word shit, and just going off. I'm like, okay, dude, you know, you're you're on <laughs> Randbot show, like you know, I. It's like it's 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 n word shit. It's like, dude, do you think they do you think that they're the ones growing it, like? A lot of it? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I, they don't strike me as the horticultural type, uh, really. Um, although maybe one or two, but yeah, I think for the most part, uh, no. Uh, anything else on Rand? I'm trying to think of another question about Rand, but um, you might be. No, because I actually out. have to. I, mean, I, might, I might be Randed out. Well, we just did. You won't believe it. We just did two hours about it. So. Yeah, we did. <laughs> We did do two And I got to go off of here and go do another like three hours about it because I'm finishing up that stream. So we'll finish it up, brother. I appreciate you coming on the kill stream. Next time you come back, let's talk about wrestling or something in, you know, the news, entertainment news or whatever. Let's 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 do something like we normally do uh, and just shoot the shit. Yeah. So I'd like that. We're going to talk about cool stuff. Awesome yeah. stuff. But hey, let me take. Can I tell these people to listen to something? Sure. Listen to the uh, Hate House still exists. I get people all the time are like, "Oh, dude, the program. I I, I missed Hate House. It still is. It still exists. It's on my Odyssey channel." And um, be sure if you want to like hear the like the whole thing with the Rand shit. I have a, I'm gonna have a three part series on my Odyssey channel called "On Randbot and His Lies." <laughs> so be sure to check that out. I will check that out for sure. <laughs> You'll Be never like watch this stain off, Larry, coming on the kill stream. Not like Rand was here every day for years and years and years. <laughs> yeah. uh, but okay. <laughs> Criminal and fucking exile. <laughs> running running from his life of crime, mate. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> it's very nice down here in my exile. I just, oh, such a beautiful day. I had to stop myself from skipping it and go to going to the beach. It's so nice. Uh, out here today um but i have some beach time coming up for christmas and i'm really glad we got to catch up man and like i said next time no trs and jp drama let's just uh shoot the shit now i'm gonna be getting back to normal I'm be, um tomorrow actually i have to go back to work so i'm gonna reset uh tonight after i get done with part three of on Randbot and his lies but thank you for having me on you're welcome sir merry christmas Merry Christmas to you. Have a good rest of your show. I will. I appreciate you stopping by. Larry Ridgeway, live on the Kill Stream once again. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.